Today I'm going to replace the lightning connector on an iPhone 6 Plus. I'll be using a blue silicone mat to organize my screws and other parts that come out of the phone. We'll have to start by removing the screen, so you, if you already know how to do this, you can go ahead and skip forward uh, beyond this whole part. Removal of the lightning port itself starts at about 350. Down here at the bottom of the phone, we have our two pentalobe screws right next to the lightning port itself, so go ahead and remove those to start with. And as I take these out of the phone, I'll be laying them down in roughly a uh, position that's relative to the way that they are installed the phone so that that way when we go to put it back together, we'll sort of have a guide here that shows us where they go. Now you want to take a very thin pry tool and go in just under the edge of the screen here. You don't need to go very deep. You can use that white stripe or black stripe along the edge of the screen as a guide. That is about the depth that you want to go in with your pry tool. And once you work your way around the sides and the bottom end, you don't need to go all the way up to the top because there are some tabs that are holding the screen in. But from here, you can see the screen will actually lift away from the housing. And as it starts to open up, you want to pull down so that those tabs at the top will disengage from the frame. And from here, we are actually going to go ahead and just kind of prop the screen up at about a 90 degree angle from the housing. And you want to have a heavy object to just rest this against. Unless you have a third hand helping you out, you don't want this screen to flop over and open all the way up. If you do, it will put stress on the cables inside and you can end up with some damage to your display. Once we have this propped up, there are two screws that hold a metal plate that goes right behind the battery terminal, so you'll need to remove those and the plate itself. Usually you can grab this plate by hand, but I had a pair of tweezers right next to me and we'll use that to disconnect the battery terminal itself. So be very careful when you unplug this stuff. You want to make sure you're getting underneath the metal panel, but you're not affecting any of the other parts inside of the phone. There are five screws behind this metal shield that go over the display connectors. Go ahead and take all of those out and remove the metal panel that goes on top. Next, we want to disconnect all of the display cables from the logic board. And we can take the display assembly and set it aside. Now I'm going to reposition this so that hopefully you can get a decent view of what I'm doing here. I'm arranging these screws again relative to the position that they are inside of the phone so that when we go to put it back together, we won't have a hard time figuring out where the screws go. You'll also notice that those little squares are numbered. So if you want to take notes along the way, you can do that also. Take a picture. If you have a phone in your pocket, it's always nice to have a reference so you can just kind of look back and see where this stuff goes. Now we do want to disconnect this cable, which is actually part of the lightning connector and that will kind of fold over and there is a screw behind it so I'd recommend you take this out as soon as possible if you forget that is there it's going to cause you some problems later on. We will need to unplug the antenna connector right over here so carefully get underneath the metal portion of this and just lift it straight up and that will kind of pop off just like that. And then we have lots of screws that need to be removed. I'm going to start with this one right here and keep your eye out for a small metal piece underneath here that's going to slide in towards the inner compartment of the phone. And you may have some trouble picking these screws up because they get sort of misaligned. Once you take one screw out of a panel, the panel tends to shift over to the side. So magnetizing may help that. In the worst case scenario, you can grab a pair of tweezers to pull the screws out but they do need to come completely out in order for us to get the components away from the housing. And 
and you'll notice that when you take that screw out, there's a little metal bracket that kind of moves out of position, so I'll come back to that in a second. But do make a note of the orientation of that part, and remember that you cannot put those two screws in until you replace this. This is the metal panel I was talking about that's going to kind of slide inwards. So go ahead and set that aside. That keeps the antenna wire in the correct position. So we do need to have that. Now this one's a little tricky. Just uh, Sometimes you get lucky and slide it out that way. Sometimes you have to do some maneuvering, but do be careful if you're trying to preserve this original cable not to tear it in the process. And from here we can lift the speaker straight out just like that, and that will expose pretty much everything else that we need to get to in order to remove this flex cable. Now we do have another screw here that was hidden underneath the speaker, so make sure that you remove this one. And I'm just going to set that down right here so we can remember that goes in before the speaker. And let's change this to a different, slightly different orientation, so hopefully you can get a better view. And you're going to have another plastic piece here that comes right off from where the microphone is located, so make sure that you remember to remove that. And the headset jack actually pulls away from the housing, but before you get too far with this, you want to make sure that you've separated the microphone, hopefully just the flex cable, but sometimes it will take this little plastic piece along with it. If it does, that's not a problem, but you will have to transfer it over to the new lightning connector. So I'll show you that in just a second. The important thing here is that if you are trying to preserve this flex cable, you want to be very careful about separating it from the housing. Uh, obviously, if yours is damaged, you don't have to worry too much about that, but a thin playing card and some rubbing alcohol works very well. Just be careful right here. I could have easily made the wrong slice there. You want to make sure your card doesn't slip and get caught in one of those corners or you will damage that cable. And it's pretty thin, so you have to be very careful. But as you can see, with some rubbing alcohol in this thing, if we take our time, we can just kind of slide underneath the adhesive behind it and it's not too difficult to get it removed from the phone. Again, as long as you don't get snagged and cut through it, you should be okay. And of course, if we're throwing this in the trash, we're not too worried about it, but we do need to take this antenna wire off. They do not come with the replacement part and neither does the little plastic piece that I pointed out a couple minutes ago. So for this piece, what we're gonna do is grab a hold of that metal. Uh, if you have a pair of tweezers, hopefully, and we can just kind of separate it. And then again, this piece of plastic right here needs to come off of the cable because they don't typically include these with replacement parts. So what I had initially intended to do was to slice between these two, uh, but sometimes it does come out with the ports. Not a big deal, just make sure that you don't lose this. That's gonna go onto the new cable. You can try to set it down inside the housing, but that doesn't always work out too well. Now I'm gonna grab a hold of this cable and just disconnect it, uh, the antenna wire that is. And that's pretty much it as far as the disassembly goes. Putting everything back together is pretty much the reverse of the process that you just saw, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave the camera on and make a few notes and comments in case uh, hopefully these will help someone out at some point if you have difficulty with them. I usually don't reconnect the antenna wire just yet. You can see I've just set it off there to the side because it usually ends up just getting in the way and being difficult. This also has a small post and there's a hole that it aligns with on the microphone cable itself. So that'll kind of give you a guide as to where this plastic piece needs to be positioned. If you have to, you can add some adhesive 3M 300 LSE or any other thin double-sided adhesive between those two pieces, but you want to make sure that you don't block the microphone hole, which is right beneath that little gold box. If you do, you won't have a microphone. And remember that the lightning port and the headset jack kind of slide down into the bottom end of the frame. And from there, we just want to make sure that all of these holes are lined up and that our microphone is in fact in the correct position before we put the bracket on that goes behind it. And this will kind of uh, help it keep from moving away from the bottom of the phone and allowing debris or anything else to get inside there. And if you have a nice snug fit with this pushing up against the bottom of the microphone, 
you shouldn't have any problems as long as you keep your phone nice and clean uh, and dry, I should add. And from here, I'm going to just partially install these screws. I don't screw them all the way down because that will make it more difficult to reposition the other side of that panel or piece, whatever you want to call it. So I'll generally just start to thread these in. That way, if I need to shift anything around, it's pretty easy to do before I screw them in fully. And I always hesitate to say the word tighten because you really don't need to tighten these things very much. You just turn them until they stop. And once you feel that you've reached the end of the threads, don't put any more, don't apply any more force to it. These are very easy to strip if you aren't careful. All right, so let's try to get this back to where you can see what I'm doing here. And we are going to start with this one screw that was underneath the speaker so that we don't forget to put that back in. And as you can see, I'm kind of going back a bit here. I had to reposition a few things when I moved the phone. So if any of this is a repeat, uh, hopefully you're caught up with me already. And if you haven't already done so, you will want to go ahead and install the antenna wire or connect the antenna wire, I should say. And remember, we have to put this panel back in before those two final screws right around uh, next to the lightning port are installed. careful with this piece here. You want it to stick down to the housing and then uh, I like to put the speaker in with at least one screw at this point just kind of to kind of hold it in position. So I'll put this one down here in the corner. And then we're going to maneuver this metal piece with that tab that's hanging off the side underneath the flex cable, but on top of the plastic portion of the speaker. So this is kind of the tricky part. Um, that's where we want that thing to sit. And it can be challenging to get this in the right position and make sure that on the right hand side, the other metal tab there is on top of the speaker plastic. All right, so we'll start to thread this screw in. Again, it doesn't need to go all the way in just yet because we want to be able to make sure that we get this into the right spot. And then we have this little metal piece that goes under the speaker's plastic and under this side over here. If you have any questions, a lot of people kind of get confused about that, but it goes pretty much underneath everything for the most part, and that is going to hold that antenna wire up against the speaker assembly so that I assume nothing puts pressure on it like the battery or anything else. So I'll go ahead and start threading the lower end there. And then you may need to use some sort of tool, a pair of tweezers or a pry tool or maybe even your fingernail to make sure that that antenna wire gets tucked inside of this metal tab or panel I should say. All right, and once you're sure you have it in the correct spot, we can go ahead and put that other screw in. And those two can be fully installed at this point. Go ahead and plug in your antenna wire. Make sure this screw is tightened and I'll just generally go over all of them, make sure I haven't forgotten anything. And we can plug in the flex cable, and then I'll spare you the part where I install the battery. All 
All right, so from here, we're going to plug in the screen, put the retaining panel on behind the connectors, plug in the battery, put the rest of the screws inside, close it up, and we are just about done. All right, be sure to tuck in those tabs at the top of the screen underneath the edge of the frame and then just kind of work your way gently along the sides and the phone should close up properly. And for some reason, I always like to see if I can race the boot up on an iPhone as I put the pentalobe screws in the bottom. And with an iPhone 6 Plus, it's not too tough to do because this thing takes a while to turn on. Easy enough. If you found the video helpful, like it, share it, check out my channel for more tutorials and product reviews, and most of all, remember to hit the subscribe button. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments section, and thanks for watching.